very good morning everyone so today we are going to deal with the topic theories of dividend so in theories of dividend we have two theories of dividend that is irrelevance theory and relevance theory and this irrelevance theory is propounded by Montegliani and Miller and relevance theory is propounded by Walter and Gordon so let us discuss what irrelevance theory is in this video so coming to irrelevance theory so what irrelevance theory says is uh, dividend policy is irrelevant that is whatever dividend the company is paid to its shareholders it will not affect the market value of shares it will not affect the profitability of the firm it will not affect the shareholders wealth that is propounded in irrelevance theory so what irrelevance theory says is uh, dividend policy is irrelevant even though a firm pays a dividend uh, out of profits or retains the profit it will not have impact on the profitability of the firm that is proposed by irrelevance theory so coming to relevance theory so relevance theory says that dividend policy is relevant that is dividend policy affects the profitability of a firm dividend policy affects the value of the firm and dividend policy affects the shareholders wealth and this theory also says that the value of the firm in the stock market generally fluctuates on the basis of dividend distribution that means a firm which is paying more and more dividend it is an indicator that a firm is running profitability so walter and gordon has proposed that dividend policy is relevant for the success of the firm so let us discuss the first theory that is relevance theory which is proposed by Montegliani and Miller that is MM theory of dividend so Montegliani and Miller says this dividend theory is irrelevant that is dividend payment do not have any effect on the profitability of the company so that is what is explained by Montegliani and Miller so what he says is when a firm earns a profit and if that profit is distributed as dividend then obviously what happens is market price of the share increases value of the firm also increases conversely there is another thing which is happening on the other side here when you are distributing the profit as dividend your market price of shares is increasing and value of the firm is also increasing on the other side another thing is happening what is happening your retained earnings are getting decreased you will not have sufficient finance to finance your activities as a result you supply additional shares when the supply of your additional shares increases then the price of shares decreases and the value of the firm again decreases so here what can you observe so whatever increase in value you have obtained by giving dividend is subsided by decrease in value due to decrease in retained earnings so on the basis of this concept mn says that there is no effect of dividend on the profitability or market price or value of the shares he instead says that the value of the firm is affected by the ratio of investment the value of the firm is not affected by distribution of earnings it is affected by its earnings clear and this theory is based on the following assumptions that is perfect capital market exists that is buyers and sellers have perfect knowledge regarding the market they are free to buy and sell securities as and when they like that is the first assumption second assumption is rational investors that is investors have full knowledge regarding the security market and the third assumption is absence of taxes there is no taxes present in the economy of the firm and the fourth one is fixed investment policy a firm follows a fixed rate of investment policy and the last one is no flotation cost that is no transaction cost for buying and selling of securities and the last assumption which is given by mm is no investor can affect the market price 
So on the basis of these assumptions, he has proposed this theory. Clear? And how the valuation is done under MM theory. So if you want to find the market price of shares, equity shares, that is P0, it is usually found by D1 plus P1 by 1 plus KE, where D1 indicates dividend to be received at the end of the year. And P1 indicates market price at the end of the year. And KE indicates cost of equity. So, and if you want to find out the P1 for the above formula, you can find it out like this. P0 into 1 plus cost of equity minus D1, that is dividend, to be received at the end of the year. And when you want to find the market value of the firm, according to MM theory, then the formula used is N plus M into P1, where N is number of shares outstanding at the beginning of the period. And P1 is the market price of shares at the end of the period. And M is number of shares to be issued at the end of the period. And from this formula, if you want to find out M, then the value or the formula is I minus E minus N into D1 by P1. Where N is number of shares to be issued. And I is the investment required. E is the earnings which are expected and N is the number of shares outstanding at the beginning of the year. And the D is dividend to be paid at the end of the year. And the last one, P1 is market price at the end of the year. So this is how the valuation of equity shares as well as the valuation of firm is done on the basis of MM theory. And coming to the criticism of this theory. So all the assumptions which are given by MM. That is perfect market exists. This is criticized. That is in reality, perfect market do not exist. And the second assumption is also criticized. Racial investors. So many financialists oppose that investors will not have perfect knowledge regarding the market. And the third assumption is also criticized. That is absence of taxes. So in reality, without taxes, there is no firm. And the fourth assumption is also criticized, that is fixed investment policy. In turn, a firm will not have a fixed investment policy. The investment policy of the firm keeps on changing. And the last assumption is also criticized, no flotation cost. But in practice or in practical life, you will have a flotation cost. That is whatever transaction you are incurring, you will have a brokerage fee for it, stamp fee for it. So all buying and selling transactions involve a flotation cost. So these are the criticisms of this theory. Thank you.